Hey gang, welcome to Mobile Fitness and Pilates. I'm a satellite center for Pilates Academy International out of New York City, Pilates on 5th. I am playing a bit today a little bit with our Cadillac or specifically our Tower of Power with BBU. Um, I'm only using the one side of the component, so it's not a full trapeze table or full caddy. It is a half one, and that's all you need for today. So you don't need any other apparatus. I'm going to be using the purple springs with a hand strap as well as a loop. You can choose whatever type of handle you would like. If you want the handles as well as the straps, you can switch them back and forth. If you want to go a little lighter, you could also use the yellow versus the purple. And I'm also going to be using the push through bar. I will be using the safety strap for a couple of things that are inverted where we're going to bottom load, which means we're coming into this bottom part of the carriage bed or of the push through bar. I will not be using the wood bar today. So that is the only piece that I'm not going to pull out. As for straps and springs, you can sort of choose your levels as you go. This will be an intermediate advanced. And I never always say it's just an advanced or it's just an intermediate. I am more advanced in my flexion and my stabilization than I am in my extension. That's as simple as it is. So when I'm doing certain movements, I will show you modifications or ways to intensify an exercise. And really you can take just about any class to just about any level. You just gotta be a little creative with how you change your spring load, where you position yourself on the body, and how you load and unload the spine using your body parts. Um, so I always find putting levels is a little bit of a game. So this one will be an intermediate advanced flow. We're going to start. I always start in standing. That's my go-to, whether I'm doing mat, uh, reformer, chair, whatever it is. I always start in standing just because I think it's so important just to get the whole body moving. And I really can't think of any sport that starts lying down. All of them start up in some way or another. So I'm going to start in the up position. Sits bones here, shoulders down and away. Think of pubic bone to belly button, belly button to rib cage, just engaging. Fingertips on. I'm just going to give a little releve and a lower. So I'm not really focusing on a high releve um, per se. I am lifting up higher. If you have any feet issues, just keep it a little lower. Go two more. I just want to find that base of support and I want to find my breath. And one more. Leave your heels down and I just want you to push the bar and give me a little mini squat and bring it up. Widen the legs if you want to. Just a little mini squat and bring it up. On that mini squat, because we are on the tower component, if you push too far down, you will forward flex a little too far. And I do want a neutral spine, neutral pelvis. So just a little baby push on that bar. Go ahead and hold it down here. Palms are open. Lift your heels. Lower your heels. Just finding that sense of balance. Find your breath. Inhale nose. Exhale mouth. Shoulders are down. Elbows are soft. Let's go one more time. Now go ahead and leave your heels lifted. Bend from the knees to the hips. Five, four, three, two, one. Lengthen all the way to tall and lower the heels. Go singles. Squat. Releve, lengthen tall and lower. Again, squat, releve, lengthen tall and lower. Let's reverse. Rise up tall, inhale, exhale, squat. Lower the heels, push everything out. Now notice when you're standing up here, that bar is much lower on the standing roll down. So if that's too deep, do this on the other side on the floor. Rock it back and forth because it does go deeper into my hamstrings when I'm standing on the tower component. Bend the knees, drop the tab, and articulate the spine. I'm going to rise up, and I'm just going to lean back a little bit, very modest, and I'm just going to rock it from left to right, just feeling a little bit of shoulder movement. Feel those spines moving a little bit. And then come back to center and lower. Let's go again. Rise up, squat down. Lower your heels. Push that out. Drop down into that. And bend into one leg. Bend into the other. So if that's a little low, come up here, especially on those hammies. Right, if you're okay, go ahead and get right down there. And I'm just lunging from left to right. Inhale, exhale. And then go ahead and bend both knees. Drop your tailbone. Drop your head. Peel it all the way up and a little more purposeful this time. Zipper all the way up, lift the heart and extend back. In this position, look over to the one side and gently look to the other. Watch your shoulder doesn't go. Bring it back to center. And here we're just going to go neutral spine down and then bend the knees, drop the tailbone, curl the spine and roll up. Let's do it two more times like that. Inhale, go down. Exhale, come up. One more time. So in warm-up, I like to move all 
all the directions the spine invites. So we're going to go into poodle wag. I'm going to come down, pull that bar into my head, and wiggle my tailbone. Now if I want more wiggle, I'll bring my feet closer together. If it feels okay, I can stretch out that bar. If it still feels good, I'm going to look to my hip as I bring it around the corner. This isn't speedy. Nice and slow. Feel that wiggle. Draw those abdominals in. Find that breath. Come back to center. Bend your knees. Slowly fold out. And to intensify this, the layback this time, I'm going to step in tighter. Lie back with straight arms. So there's a trust factor there. Lift that heart. Open that up. Wiggle those shoulders back. Go ahead and look over one direction. Don't get gumby in your lower back. Look over the other. Bring it back to center. Pull all the way forward. Lower the heels and step back. I'm going to find a lateral rotation. And I'm just going to come down, reaching away. So I'm putting my body weight into the bar as I come into a very passive squat. And then I'm going to pull away as I come up and find myself in my own body weight. So again, I'm leaning all my body weight back. So back up enough, your arms go straight. Come down as far as your knees, hips, will, ankles will allow. And then pull it all the way up. And just give a little lift to the heart. And one more time, all the way down. I'm going to stay down this time. If I need the bar, I'm going to keep it and maybe kind of move up a little higher. If I'm okay with the range of motion in the knees, I'm going to let that bar go. Bring my hands to the ground and start to wiggle a little bit through my knees, hips, ankles. So I want to come up on the ball of foot. I want to spin. So if you've done my mat classes, you're going to see this looks familiar. Right, my warm-ups look fairly familiar from class to class. I like to have a fairly similar warm-up so people feel really good about the warm-up and they can just get into their bodies and not worry about the choreography per se. That's just my own little take and twist on things. So I'm going to grab that bar. I'm going to come back into parallel on my legs. Press away. Now, if I can't get my legs to almost straight or my arms at least to straight, I'm going to back it up. So from here, I'm going to lift the balls of the feet and stretch that down. Now, a little more intense, I'm going to look up to my pubic bone and then I'm going to wiggle just feeling that nice elongation so I've gone back into that poodle wag again that lateral flexion in my spine bringing the feet to the floor I'm going to come all the way up step in what feels too tight and just mobilize the shoulders so I'm going getting that scapula moving I'm doing a retraction a depression, a protraction, and an elevation. And in there, there's a little inward-outward rotation of the shoulder blade. So that shoulder blade moves in six different ways, and we just want to get all of that stuff warmed up. So again, it's not a big bend and straighten of the arm. It's the movement through the shoulders. Now go ahead and leave those away and reach one arm up and take yourself into a gentle side lateral. I'm going to push the bar down, reach over to the side, lean my hip in opposition, peek to the floor. Really big couple breaths here, finding the intercostal muscles getting nicely stretched out. And then I'm going to bring it all the way up. And again, just kind of watch your roof. <laughs> I'm kind of reaching that roof. Take it over to the other side, lean the hips in opposition. Push that arm away, lean the hips away. Breathe as big as you can into the rib cage. One more big massive breath and then bring it all the way out. Give a few little wiggles here and just roll those shoulders. So I'm going to put down that bar. Go ahead and disengage the blues. So I have blues both on high. Let that baby go down and I'm bringing up my purples. Now, if you want to decrease the weight load a little bit, um, a little less in the shoulders, you could use the yellow longs. I'm using the purple longs. So back yourself up so it feels like there's some resistance in the spring and it sort of wants to bounce you forward, but you're controlling it and it's not bouncing you forward. Slight bend in the knee. Watch here you're not tucking the tailbone into flexion. I'm quite neutral. I'm quite neutral. And without bending the elbows, I'm going to start some scapular rows. So we just move those scapula. Now we're actually going to add some resistance to it. If you find it awkward to find the scaps, move back a bit and give yourself a little more resistance. So give me a retraction and a, pro, a protraction. God, speak, Fiona. Inhale, exhale as you go. So here it's not really about the big row of the arms, finding rhomboids. You are finding rhomboids, but more so with the solid movement of those retraction, protraction movement through the scapula. <sighs> now go ahead and pull your arms back so your shoulders are at your middle ear and squat down. 
So again, you can move forward or backwards. I've placed my hands into the handle component versus the loop, up to you. And I'm just gonna sit back. We're only going as deep as the tailbone doesn't tuck under. So I'm not doing a passive squat. I'm doing just a nice, strong, powerful squat. If here you can't avoid the shoulders popping forward, you need to move forward. So the farther forward I move, the less support I'm going to get on the legs, the stronger the pull will be. Let's go four more. So forward and backwards will change it. Three more. Nice and powerful. Exhale, two. Now stay down here and pulse. Let's go five, four, three, two, one. Power up. Neutral spine, neutral pelvis still. And again, three, two, one, power up. This time we're going to stay down there and start, uh, add some rotation. <laughs> Come down and then keeping the arms just slightly bent, I'm just going to rotate, or sorry, alternate unilateral here just with the arms first. Then I'm going to start a rotation. The one arm doesn't go all the way to straight. Your spring doesn't release. So you hear how that was a spring release? Losing control of my springs. I want to control both directions. Here I'm also trying to avoid swaying through my pelvis. My ribs are rotating. Let's go three, two, one. Both arms to straight. Power those legs up. Come forward and just kind of give a little wiggle jiggle. So we're going to go into more of a unilateral, more into a lunge. I'm going to step that foot back, and my first measurement, because I'm going to have an option here, I'm going to have the option of putting my foot up with my toes curled under, or putting with my foot up with my toes um, flexed the other direction. This is going to be more unstable, kind of like a Bulgarian split squat, uh, split lunge. I'm going to take that leg back, and I'm just going to find my happy place. So if you're shorter, you might need to shorten the distance on your bar there. So shoulders down, rib, rib, hip, hip, square. So right here I'm tilted. I'm going to bring up that side of the rib and I'm just going to start my nice squats. Now I'm not rowing, I'm just holding. So if I'm holding closer with a bit of tension, the springs are giving me love here. If I want to make this harder, I'm going to hold very loose. So I'm getting a flirt of attention, but I'm not using the spring load to stabilize me. Now, if that's working nicely, find yourself strong and take that foot curled over so your toes are engaged to the bar. And now you're going to get a hip flexor stretch as well as that glute hamstring of the front leg. Shoulders drawn down. Again, I'm holding as gentle as I can. If you feel you can let go of the straps, please go right ahead. We will use them for an exercise partway through this though. Go ahead and, if it's still feeling good, uncurl the toe. And now go down. Whoo, there she is. Let's go four more. Whew, should feel the booty on the front leg and a stretch to the hip flexor on the back leg. One more. Beautiful. Now hold the handles or the straps a little tighter. Press down and you're going to drag this leg up into balance. As you drag it up, watch it hike your hip. Lift. And then I'm going to push gently into my palms and scale forward. I'm going to come all the way up. Reach that leg for the bar again. Lunge. Find stability. Knee lift. Open up the hands, push gently into the straps, and teeter-totter to scale. One more time, working really hard on that stability leg. Lunge. Hip comes up, and then teeter-totter forward. Come all the way to tall, and come out of that working leg. <laughs> So take these toes and kind of curl them under. That foot was just working really hard on stabilizing you. Take a moment, relax that out. And let's set up the other side. So this is my dumbass side. I got stuff going on in the hips. When I do the balance part, I've got to really honor my body and just be careful with it. And hopefully I stay balanced. From this position, let's come up. Let's go down and up. So I'm just going to face you straight on just for a brief moment. Keep going with that. When we do our lunges, there's a tendency to lunge down. Now I can't go as wide as I'd like to, but there's a tendency to lunge down, and I'm exaggerating, but to tilt our pelvis, right? Like, like sideways. We want to keep this rib and hip 
connected. So you got to think of pulling up this side and then watch your knees not going way over the toe. Um, for mobility purposes, is it okay to go over the toe? Absolutely. But that's not kind of where we're going with it today. So I'm just going to go up and down. So you maybe have two more. You've been here for a little while. And then go ahead and find that happy place. Reach the foot back. Engage the toe. If you don't need so much spring love, relax it. If you need even less spring love, let go of your straps. Remember, you will go to the balance point. If you don't need the straps for that full sequence of balance point, completely let go of the straps and don't use them any time through this sequence. I need them. I'm not going to lie. I just need them for that little bit of closed kinetic chain awareness. From here, if it's feeling good, I'm going to uncurl and then come down. So this is my dumb side. And that, this is a good challenge. This is a good challenge for me. i got to slow it right down. And let's go four more. Much harder for me to find stability. Three more. Firstly, I have something going on in the hip flexor that's back there. And then this front leg is my weaker link. So i got two things fighting me on this today. So I'm going to put my hands in the handles, drive that knee forward. Watch, I don't pop up my hip. And then lengthen forward into scale. And then come up just as slow or as quick as you can. Up to you. Find your foot on the bar. Lunge. Knee drive. And scale. And you can hear on this side, when my foot leaves that bar, it's louder on this side. Because I'm holding onto that bar tighter. Press down. I'm going to try and do that a little more gently. There it is. Drive my knee up. And then scale forward. We have one more. Ooh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then lunge down. Find your stability. Drive your knee up. And forward. Come all the way to tall. Ooh, wiggle out those legs. Let's go ahead and put those straps gently down. Bring that up to the second eyelet from the top. Still using my purples. And we're going to go into a little bit of abdominal work. I'm going to put the bar down because it will, for my body length, get in the way. So I've just dropped that down. And then I'm going to go into seated. So because we're going to move forward and backwards, if you can't sit tall here, um, you can't really put something underneath the bum. So think of bending the knees a little bit to take the pressure out of the lower back. If the lower back's really bothering you, feet to the floor as you do some of the movements, perfectly fine. The first thing I'm going to start with is a stretch of my toes. So if you can see my foot, I'm going to bring both feet and just stretch out those toes a little bit more. So I've gone into um, beach pose here on the upper torso. And I'm just stretching into my toes here, trying to roll them in the opposite direction. So into that nice, strong connection into the shoulder pad. Now I'm going to roll my toes the other direction so that I am stretching to the front of the shin. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth here. So a lot of times we kind of forget about the toes and the hands. It's really important to take awareness, especially in the more advanced movement patterns. We get into the feet and the hands as anchor points. Warm them up. Wake them up. So from here, I'm going to grab hold. And I'm just going to hold gently. I'm going to go on the loops. I want as least pressure as I can. And from here, we're going to start a roll down. Exhale, scoop the abdominals, roll off your sits bones, roll it down vertebrae by vertebrae. The springs are going to give you some love here. Neutral spine, tuck the chin in, push that flat back down, and then roll it forward. So here, don't reach your arms. Think fold through for flexion. Lumbar spine vertical to the earth. And then stack yourself to tall. Let's go again. Exhale, scoop. Your feet will slowly leave the foot bar or the foot shoulder pads. That's okay. Inhale, cervical nod, big breath out. Exhale. So this is a mat exercise. Roll right back instead of sitting tall this time. So if you don't need the straps, you can let them go. That will actually make it harder. Having said that, partway through, we are going to use those straps. So just you go very gentle on the straps if you don't really need them, but you kind of want them for the next exercise. Roll it down. Inhale, so we're going to have a big breath out, flatten, and then come forward and go tall. Now I want a bit more resistance from my straps, so I'm not going to move into my shoulder pads. I'm going to scoop down three quarters of the way and try and get that back, that lumbar or sacrum, nice and flat. Not my lumbar, but just my sacrum. From here, shoulders down, row. 
row, nice and strong. Let's go four. Keep your scoop. Three. Breath out. Two. And one. And go ahead and continue to roll all the way down. Inhale, cervical knot. Exhale, roll it all the way up. I'm going to grab the looser part again. Reach it forward. Stack to tall. Nice and tall. Here I'm going to hinge back halfway. And then hinge up. Nice and strong. Hinging. If hinge is difficult, back up. Watch here you're not tucking. Pull your shoulder blades back, lift your heart, find neutral. So I have curve in my lower back. We're going to add on. We're going to go halfway back. Now change your spine on an exhale and scoop. And then roll all the way down. Head touches. Inhale, cervical knot. Exhale, press it forward and reach. Now roll it all the way back to stack to tall. And go ahead and hinge three quarters of the way or halfway. Scoop, change your spine, go all the way. Inhale, cervical knot, exhale, and come all the way through. Peel to tall. So if I wanted to work harder, I would move forward or I would drop my straps. Right? So I've moved forward. Now I've got a hinge and I have no love from my spring until I go my scoop and then it gives me a little love. Inhale, cervical knot, exhale, come around the corner and press. Stack to tall. One more time. Hinge. Exhale, scoop, change that spine, length and long. Inhale, cervical knob, look to the toes. Exhale, fold forward with the lumbar spine, staying vertical, stack to tall. So now we're going to do arch and curl, or curl and arch, I guess. Farther forward, the harder it will be. So if you need more love from the springs, back up so your knee or your, uh, your hand, hmm, calf is at the conversion. So I'm going to scoop and I'm going to roll all the way down like I did on the first one. Freeze here. Retract your shoulders. Not a big bend of the elbows. Retract the shoulders. As you do that, peekaboo behind you. Lift up with your thumbs a little bit and find yourself floating all the way up. Freeze here. We're going to scoop and roll back. So it's round back, arch up. Retract, lift. And find that nice extension through thoracic and neckline as you come up. Two more. Exhale. Scoop. Again, you can let go of the straps. Pull. Lift. And come up. So here's me letting go of my straps. So I look fairly okay in that exercise. I let go. I can go down just fine. And now I retract and lift. <laughs> That's it. I can't come up. So there's that awareness of always be aware of just how much you're pulling into straps. So if you want to make this harder, you get even closer. You hold even less. You hold delicate. And you scoop. You bring the straps down one eyelet on the reformer there. And lift. So that was sloppy and it wasn't great and I had to bend my elbows to come up. So try and find a position where you are getting love but it's not, you're not riding the spring, right? So one last one, scoop as you go down, we don't want to ride springs. Retract and feel those back muscles working and yes, the hip flexors do assist. Let that go, open the legs wide to the carriage and just fold forward. Give a little no on the neckline. Inhale, exhale for me. Start at your tailbone. Peel to tall. So we're going to open up the front side. We're going to go to a little bit of extension work. Come into kneeling. And we're going to do a little cat-cow to thigh stretch to start with. Just to open everything up. And then we're going to carry on with a little bit of swan. So the closer I kneel, the more um, lengthening back I can get. And the farther through I'll push. I'm going to start to press the bar down. Peel vertebrae by vertebrae. It's going to push through. Now what happens here is a lot of people put pressure into the carriage or into the hands. And they push with their knees. Um, that on these reformers, if you don't have a walking mechanism on the foot plate, will push the whole carriage back. So once you're partway through, you've got to remember it's the articulation of the spine and the armpits are coming down to the shoulder pads, not the weight going through the tower. From here, if it feels good, get a little rocking back and forth, finding that extension or that pendulum sensation, and then drop your tailbone heavy, articulate your spine, try not to sit back on your heels. Pull the bar in using the abdominal Abdominals. Find a rib hip connection, lay back, and then lift the heart. We'll return to this.
part way through today with less love. Peel it down. We're just going to get it mobilizing for now. Lengthen again. Drop down into your armpits, not through. Could you go through? Yes. Not on the BBUs unless you have a locking mechanism on your foot plate. You got to be careful with that. And then drop your tailbone heavy. So right here I'm crunching. As I crunch, I'm going to pull those arms in, finding that abdominal crunch helping me come up. Find a slightly supported spine so the glutes are turned on gently. Lengthen back, lift the heart, and extend. Bring it in. Bring it forward. <clears throat> so that allowed me to warm up my extensors. I'm going to come back. And I'm just going to do two of these in swan mat and then go to my push through bar. So I've got my feet in lateral, my legs, knees, hips, ankles in lateral rotation. Toes are just touching gently. Hands are in swan position. I'm making the assumption you know mat. Push the marble with your nose, pull your abs in, and let's lengthen into that swan. Shoulders away from your ears. Little no in the neckline. Don't go gumby and hang out. Lift and connect and gently come down. Let's do that one more time. Press that marble. Lengthen, draw the abdominals in. So if you've got anything going on in back extension work, you could stay here. We're going to stepping stone this. Bring it down. Pull the bar down. So a couple measurement things. The farthest through I want to be is my palm parallel to the edge of the tower. Farther through, and I'll hit my head on the second exercise. If I'm tight in the shoulders, I might want to back up so that my palm is right here on the bar with my arms straight. I'm going to put more pressure into ring finger, baby finger. Shift my shoulders down and lengthen to come up. So again, I'm not pushing pressure into my thumbs. That will collapse me into my pec line. Gently come down. I'm putting pressure into the side of my hand, ring finger, baby finger. Watch you're not squeezing with your legs. They're reaching away, but they're not your anchor point. You're not hugging the carriage. Inhale here. Exhale, come down. Now we're going to play with that. If that was a nice challenge, stay there. I'm going to wrap my thumbs. I'm going to bring the bar so it feels like it wants to lift me up. The bar is coming first, and then I'm going to continue to press the bar up. Inhale here, no pressure in your neck. And then wrap your thumbs. The bar and your body come down at the same time time. So you'll have a stick point where you suddenly just want to go. Pow. Now, if that was a nice challenge, I want you to stay with that, with that weight load. Here's a great way of changing advanced levels. Take off one spring, that much more, that much less love. Same pattern. Bend the elbows. And now it's a little harder to get that bar to go up because the springs are not assisting me. As I come down, the springs are also not helping my eccentric Ooh, and I just want to dump right there, contraction as I come down. So if you're happy with that, go ahead and do two or three with just the one blue. So I'm going to try it without any springs. I probably won't even get the bar up. My extension is not advanced. And that's why I always say it's kind of a game whether you call it, whether you consider yourself advanced, intermediate. I'm intermediate at best in my extension. I'm working on it, but I'm not there. So now I'm going to pull that. It goes above my head. And I'm stuck. I'm stuck, right? Because the bar's not helping me get up. So I've got to really focus. And I drop my head and I squeeze my legs. And I'm doing everything wrong to find that. So I just don't have the power in my back extensors to get to the height to push the bar up. I don't have it. I don't have the strength there. So I'm going to put that blue back on because that's where I need to work more. So always be aware of when do you start riding your spring and when are you jumping in the muscles to achieve an exercise, neither of which you want to do. So here, that little load allows me to come up. Inhale here. This is our last one. Come down with control. With control. Right there. I want to drop. And bring it out. Beautiful. Let that bar gently go up. And press back into your child's pose. Just open that up. So when you're playing with levels, just be very mindful when it feels like you're kind of using the spring to do the exercise and you're just riding along for joy. Roll and come up. Or when you are having to kind of pop the hips or pop the head or pop a body part that is not part of the exercise to move into the exercise. You're not benefiting yourself. So you may as well give yourself more love or give yourself less love in order to achieve the exercise. So go ahead and we're going to go a little bit into, we'll go into some abdominals and then we're going to go into parakeet. So go ahead and put both springs on. Put your headrest up. 
and let's roll in. So I like to bring the foot bar up. Now, I've got a little game on here. I put a um, green marker. It can be uh, painter's tape. We've made these little connectors and we put them there and that's lined up with the middle spring which basically then when I lie down it's in line with my pubic bone and it's helping me find center so I'm going to curl in there my headrest is up just to allow that cervical nod to start with and then I'm just going to bring that bar down so holding very gently just on the sides of it I'm just going to do a little bit of that protraction retraction again just kind of finding that position to set my shoulders and then I'm going to leave my shoulders not pinched but gently down and turn it into an overhand grip walk the legs out sits bones inhale cervical nod and I'm just going to roll up so if my feet are too tight that'll be awkward so when I come up I'm not going to go to dumb shoulders I'm going to find myself with a slight flexion in my lumbar spine shoulders down and I'm lengthening my upper thoracic my thoracic and my neckline I'm going to scoop and continue to roll down. Inhale, cervical nod, look to your pubic bone, exhale, find that nice length. Watch you're not reaching with your shoulders, and then deepen your scoop, and vertebrae by vertebrae, come down. Now if that's nice there, stay there. Otherwise, you're gonna bring just one leg up. Here you're gonna really watch the shifting of your pelvis. Inhale, cervical nod, exhale, lengthen. Right here we'll tend to shift, hike the side of the leg that's lifted, keep that neutral so your knees are the same length. And then roll it down. And then we're going to do the other side. Inhale, cervical nod, exhale, lengthen. Watch the shift on this side. Watch your nod in turnout. Let's go parallel. And then bring it all the way down. Now, if this feels good, you'll bring up both legs. Or repeat the single leg again. Lengthen, squeeze, find a little teaser. And then scoop and bring the legs down. One more time, switch legs if you were doing single leg. Inhale, cervical nod. Exhale, squeeze the legs together. Inhale, teaser and exhale, fold it all the way down. So we're gonna continue with that. You can either keep the feet down, do one leg two or three times and then do the other, or you're going into full teaser legs along. Inhale, cervical nod, look to your toes, exhale, float it up. Inhale, keep it here. Exhale, lengthen, float it down. See if you can keep those feet off the carriage bed. Inhale, cervical nod, look to your toes. Exhale, roll it up. Inhale here. Exhale, roll it down. Make sure you're switching legs each time. We're going to do two more if you're doing single leg work. Inhale, cervical nod. Exhale, roll it up. Inhale, keep. Exhale, and I'm reaching those legs, making sure I'm staying straight to that marker that I told you about. Lengthen it up. All right, so there's that marker right between my legs. And then roll it all the way down. Bring your knees in, lower one, lower the other. I'm just going to roll up a little bit to let that bar go. Hold the sides of my tower and get some knee sways going here. Inhale, exhale. So we're going to get into some hamstrings on parakeet and split parakeet. With that movement, we are going to do the roll-up component of it. If you're uneasy with the roll-up, just skip that part. Go ahead and give a stronger stretch into the lower back. So I find my QL works very hard at stabilizing in unilateral patterns that are um, in supine position. So we just want to make sure that that QL is nice and open. Reach one leg, bring the other leg up, and over it goes. Play here a little bit. So I'm looking the opposite direction of my hip, and I'm trying to get a little bit of twisting action. Untwist yourself, grab behind one leg, grab behind the other, and roll it up. So if you're not a fan of parakeet and split parakeet, or I go to do the single leg work, and you're like, no, it's not gonna happen, you can stay with the double leg work, or bring your feet over here and do bridge and do the single leg pattern that I'm doing on the split parakeet. So split parakeet, parakeet is a little more advanced. Um, choose it if you like. So I'm just going to roll down. Now where you're going to be really depends on the length of your legs, the length of your torso. All, all that kind of stuff does play into, into the roll here. Ideally, it's the ball of the foot. If I go ball of foot, I'm going to cramp. So I'm going a little higher. I'm going kind of right here on my foot versus ball of foot. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a cramp instantly. My legs are pretty darn close together. And I'm just going to start the first part. So I have an angle. I'm not right underneath my bar. I have an angle. And I should be able to get my butt down completely. So I'm just going to use my feet, my knees, my hips to bend. I have a very creaky bar. And then reach it through. So a couple of things to watch for as we do this. Go ahead and just move this bar two or three times. I have blue springs on on high. 
As I pull down, I'm going to walk my feet forward so that my arch of my foot, or at least towards the middle side of my foot, not just my toes, are on the bar. The last thing you want to happen is that bar to snap up. Snug it. So here's my first level. As I come up, I can grab behind my legs a little bit, and I can use that bent knee position to help me come up into my forward and then roll it back. As I bend the knees, it'll actually make the roll back a little easier, and then the arms go over the head as the feet goes up. Now, if I want to make it harder, my knees go through, my arms reach. I'll let my legs go to straight first, and then I'll complete a roll up which is harder, and then lengthen through. Now, if you can't reach all the way through, don't. Reach where you can. If your shoulder pads are bugging you, take them off. They don't bother me, so I don't worry about it. Roll it back. A straight leg roll back is harder. Arms go above. Knees bend. I send my bar to the sky. I bring my arms down for a flirt of control. I always do a little reset check here, and then I start at my pubic bone, and I peel off vertebrae by vertebrae. Ideally, we don't roll out on the sides of our feet, so look at those. We stay in parallel, squeeze the glutes, and the bum will tend to drop. Lift those hips, tuck your chin in. So this is my first parakeet. And then I'm going to peel it down. I like to take the hands off. And then as the arms go over, I bend the knees. And you can wait to straight legs or you can roll up with bent knees. I'm a little tight today. I'm rolling up with bent knees. Forward, forward. But I am rolling down with straight legs. Peel it down. Wiggle those feet on. Extend the legs up. So this time we're going to go into our split. If the double is challenging, stay here. Otherwise, hands down, bring one leg up. Watch you didn't hike the hip and then it's reaching and you haven't sunken into your booty. Harder, reach the arms, press and lift. So I'm going to point and flex the foot. Point to go down, flex to come up. This is my stronger side. I can keep my hip lifted nicely on this side. Other side, not so good. So I'm going to connect into this foot, wiggle, make sure I'm happy with rib hip. I'm really wanting to roll out on the baby toe. Pull equal pressure onto the foot. <laughs> Dumbass side. And here we go. For four. Really want to hip hike. Three, keep everything connected. And two. And one. Bring that foot all the way into connection. Peel it down. Bend that in. And again, roll it up to stretch. And again, you can, at this point in time, if split parakeet is not happening for you, go to the foot bar and do bridge work. Same leg pattern, bridge work. Bring it all the way down. Bring the hands down, bring the tower up. So now we're going to add a little circle, a little more challenging. Peel it all the way up. So this first, I'm just going to prop my hips. This first movement is on a nice linear line. When I start taking my leg out of midline, it becomes harder. So that's where we're going. Hands down or reaching. I'm going to lift and rotate open. Two more. And one. Reverse it. One. Two, just three of each, and three. Set that foot on strong. Make sure you're nice and strong. Bring the other leg up. Dumbass. Circle. One, two, three. Switch it for three. Float your chin in. Two, should be able to breathe naturally. One, foot goes down. Arms go above, peel your spine down with straight legs. Bend the knees, get your feet on there, fold it all the way up. Now, if you've got the reach, go ahead and grab that bar and feel the stretch. If you don't, fold forward here. <sighs> peel it all the way down to safely let that bar return to the top. Oh, Go ahead and use those foot shoulder pads to curl your toes and just relax out of those poor little feeties that just worked super hard. Grab behind the knees, roll it up, bring yourself to tall. So we're going to stretch out the hips that we just kind of held in tight in a few of those movements. So let's go ahead and disengage that blue again. And then from here, um, just to get a little more opening into the hips, I'm going to put my bar down. If you don't like this one with the straps, the springs, it's harder. Um, you're going to go back to the cat-cow thigh stretch that we did with the bar. 
Otherwise, I'm going to my purples. You could have yellows. If you've got yellows, you might want them higher up so they give you more love. I'm going to use my handle and I'm going to back up a considerable amount. For here, it's going to feel like it wants to pull me. So I have to find that balance between the springs controlling me and me controlling the springs. I'm going to find a little rib hip check, drop my shoulders. I have a small lateral rotation going, and I'm going to lie back in my thighs. I'm not lying back in my lower back, throwing it forward, and I'm also not sitting my bum down. I'm looking for a hip flexor, and then your rectus femoris as a secondary hip flexor, stretching out here. Knee bend will find it. So I go to here, feels good. I'm going to retract my shoulders and lift my heart a little bit. And then come in with my heart and my neckline, and then slowly come in with my hips. So if I feel I can go farther, but I'm scared I'm not going to come back up, move back an inch, literally an inch, half an inch. Give a little tuck here. Make sure that the springs aren't catapulting you forward. I'm going to scoop slightly into supported spine, lie back as far as I can, I feel in my thigh, and then roll my shoulders open. Now maybe I can go a little farther here. There it is. Now without catapulting, I bring my upper torso up and then I use my quads to control my lower torso. We're going to do it one more time. Scoop. Contraindicated for some major knee issues because this is a big stretch on the knee and the, ca and the, and the quad muscles, so be mindful. Right? Don't go as far if you're feeling anything funky or don't do it if you're feeling anything funky. And then roll it open. Go as deep as you want to go. Feel that stretch. Come up with control. Don't let it spring you up. And then lengthen. Oh. Grab your straps. Gently let your purples go. So from there, magician is lovely and it's another hamstring one, but I don't want to do another hamstring one. So I'm just going to drop these down one. And I'm going to bring one side up with just my blue. Now I'm only doing that to switch out the other. So I'm going into guillotine and I'm going into monkey. So from here, I'm going to bottom load on the bottom eyelet. And I'm going to take that down into where my reformer strap comes through on the peg. Now, as soon as you're bottom loaded, your safety strap must be used. So I'm bringing on my safety strap and I'm just going to let it all dangle right down. And then I double check. Yep, that's nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull it around and I'm just going to lock it back in. Now this will really just depend on the length of your straps. Everyone's quite different. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to take that off. So someone who has herniations, um, anything funky in the lower back um, where flexion is questionable, this in itself is just questionable if they can't get their tailbone down. So on these, on a clinical reformer, it's not a big deal. You've got more space to move out. On these ones, you don't. So the headrest would go down. I would take out the shoulder pads. I'd put my box here with a little cushion, and I'd probably push the person even farther through so that they could get their butt down on this. So it's really important to make sure that the booty can get down on this one and that you're not already starting in flexion. You'll know what I mean when I get there. So as soon as I get in here, if I go to put my feet up and my hamstrings are so tight that the, you, you look like you're like this, trying to get straight, this weight load is not your friend. You want to take one spring off. You want to be able to get the legs going straight and find a neutral alignment. If that's not going to happen, shoulder pads out, box behind, and move through. Move through. So you might have to put a little skim of a pad underneath to make your body level, right? And that way you can get into monkey and guillotine. So I start monkey with, um, depending on how tight people are, roll up and just grab the double. You have to grab both, otherwise I'm not doing anything. I'm going to grab both, roll up into my monkey, and I'm just going to point and flex on my ankles here a little bit. So now I'm stretching out those beautiful hammies that I just worked in my parakeet. Now if that feels good and you're like, oh no, I've got more in me. I'm going to roll up while I bend my knees. My tailbone might lift a little bit here. And then once I come to here, I should be able to get the tailbone down. Again, any issues, you can take off one of the blue springs or both the blue springs if the person's feeling pressure in the back. We don't want a huge amount of pressure into the back. I'm going to roll down. So my highest level on this for the most stretch is bringing it in, rolling up, and grabbing the same bar as my feet are on. And then from here, point flex. 
So if this is working nicely in your body, you can take one leg off, reach it long, and point and flex to one ankle. So as I point around, as I flex, I lengthen. Beautiful. And then let's switch. Watch, you don't hip hike here, nice and controlled, and flex and point. I like to flex and point the drifting leg in coordination with it. Finish that, bring it all the way on, and then fold as you come down. So I'm gonna bring it all the way down. On guillotine or tower, I don't like the extra spring. I don't like two springs pulling on me, so I'm gonna remove one spring fully and just click it out of the way. Out of the way. If again, this isn't a happy place for people's backs, you're gonna remove the other blue spring, test the waters, put a, a pad down through so you've got more range. Like the, the key thing is the setup is that that tailbone and that spine can get into neutral in this position. So my first step in stone is to grab my tower. And I'm going to bend my knees. I'm going to roll my spine off and look to my knees. That's as far as I'm going. Headrest must be down. And then I'm going to roll my spine vertebrae by vertebrae right back down and then extend my legs. So if that's good, and I'm like, yeah, got that. I'm going to pull the knees down. Maybe I'll stay there. Maybe that's the only articulation I want. I'm going to come to here. If I'm okay with it, I'm going to extend those legs up. And then watch you're not sickling on your ankles, roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. Watch you're not twisting your pelvis. Come down, lengthen. Now, the other option that you can do, and I do this for taller or really tight people, is I take that tower and I move it up. You've got different holes. Now, I know Stott is a different reformer, etc. but BBU, you've got holes. You've got one below and one above. Move where you've got your tower component attached. So with the next level is hands down. Bend the knees in, roll the spine off, Lengthen it up, and vertebrae by vertebrae, check out your ankles. You can see them beautifully. Don't sickle on the side of your ankles. Curl it down. Still working for you, you can reach the arms. Now I'm just using the articulation and the power of the abdominals and the mobility through the spine to find this movement. Peel it down. This leg really wants to turn out, so I'm really working hard at making sure that both these legs look very symmetrical as I come down. And then we have the reverse. Again, you can hold, down, reach. I'm going to exhale as I press up to the sky, pull my heels, watch you're not sickling, with control into my tush, and then peel vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae down to the carriage bed. Once it's down there, last time straighten the legs. Exhale, lengthen it up. Inhale, heels into the tush. And then vertebrae by vertebrae, roll that down. Beautiful. Bring that bar down and just let it lie. So if you've got the two springs on, I'm hoping you don't, but if you do, go ahead and take one off now for sure. And just let your back have a little bit of rotation again. We just stretched out that QL, our paraspinals, the back extensors beautifully on that rounding position. We just want to open those up a bit. And then bring it back. So we're going to do a bottom loaded teaser this time. So my hands are going on. I'm going to put my headrest up. I'm going to move away from my shoulder back pads a smidge. I'll start with my feet down. So remember that set of sit-ups? Now we're doing it bottom loaded. You could put an extra spring on. I, I don't like it. It's too heavy. Um, I'm going to roll up and find that connection. Feel how that's a little heavier now. And now scoop and roll down. Working for you, up comes one leg, exhale, roll up, find your teaser, inhale, keep, exhale, roll down, I'm going to put that foot right down, control both directions, control the contraction, and then the eccentric movement of those ab muscles, bringing it down, and we're going to do two more, if you want to do full legs, go ahead, straighten out, we're going to lengthen that up, big inhale here, Exhale, roll it down halfway, freeze, push it back up. Halfway down, freeze, push that back up. Two more, exhale, halfway down, squeeze those legs together. If I looked through at that foot bar, my pubic bone is straight in the center. I'm not trying to pull from left to right. And on the last time, I'm going to go all the way down to release. Give a little sway there. Rock that from left to right. Relax off those hips for me. 
go ahead and carefully come on out of that. It's a little awkward. As you come out, we're going to take off that blue, the bottom loaded blue, remove that, and just put it back up. We'll go high. We'll go high on, mm, no, because you might want it high for the next exercise. Put it on the front or put it out of the way. Go ahead and undo your safety strap. Release that and just get that right out of the way. So being in the center here isn't going to matter on this one. And then I want to, depends again on your height, etc. I'm going to bring my purples, and I do like the purples for this, up to the second eyelet from the top. And we're just going to go to feet into straps. So feet into straps here, you want to be very mindful of a neutral spine. I like to come a little bit off my shoulder pads, but if I'm wearing slippery clothing, I'm going to come farther off and use my hands as a gentle hold. I'm not going to lock out, but I'm just using them as a gentle hold. So you can sort of play with where you are. So go ahead and bring those straps up. Slide one foot into the larger loop, other foot into the larger loop. And then here I'm going to find a 90 degree angle. My legs are open, rib, rib, hip, hip, square. I am now going to inchworm out a bit. So this is just kind of a little awkward, but you inchworm out so you can get a little bit of push away into your shoulders. You don't want to be death gripping this, but there's just an awareness there. Now bend your knees to 90 degrees. If you're like, okay, I am not going to be able to keep my tailbone down. It's going to lift. I'm going to pop. You need to bring the springs down one eyelid. From here, a little bit of space. I'm going to push out almost just straight, not quite, and touch the heels down and then bring that in. Now soften the arms and just hold gently so you're not slipping. The other thing is if you don't, if you want to stay this far out but your shoulders can't reach up and hold, put a little yoga mat underneath you and then you won't slide from the intensity of the springs into the shoulder pads. So here I want to make sure rib, rib, hip, hip are nice and square and I have a bit of space right underneath my belly button. I'm not going to straight legs. I'm using my glutes and hamstrings to press down and then pull in. Let's go two more. Exhale, press down and go one more. Exhale and press down. Bring it up part way. Bring your legs together and start a very slow scissor movement. Again, slight bend in my knees. Go slow enough you don't feel yourself shifting from left to right. If you feel yourself gripping and holding on, get rid of your hands. I like rib hip with elbows flared slightly to the side and now I'm starting to wake up that hamstring set. Beautiful. Pull the knees in, find it like a brick wall right in front, and then you're just going to push one leg down and touch and bring it in. Repeat that same leg three more times. Down and touch and bring it in. Now if you can't touch without twisting your pelvis, don't touch. Focus more on the rib hip connection on the moving leg side. Go ahead and reach that leg almost out to straight and give me little circles for four. Hands off. Three. Don't hula hoop here. And two. And one. Circle the other way. Slight bend in your knees. Movement is through the hip. And now I'm circling for three. Try not to hula hoop. And two. Come across midline. And one. Pull that in. Line it up. Make sure you're square. And then go ahead and press out the other leg. So I bend, pull in, and I push away. So the, the oblique rib hip QL connection side you need to focus on is the moving leg. The non-moving leg is working, absolutely, it's holding tension. But this is the side that will tend to kind of wiggle and squirm. Now go ahead and leave it out there. Ooh, dumb side. And add your circles for four. Only come across and as wide as you don't feel your bum sway from left to right. One more, slight bend in the knee, switch directions for four, use your breath. Exhale, three, whoo, there are the legs, and two, and one, and then bring both in. So if, you, if you're a little tight in the hamstrings, you'll grab the purple part and stretch. If you've got a little more flexibility, you can actually grab the handles and pull down on the handle a little bit as you're stretching the hamstring. Um, these I actually just got off Amazon, they're iRibbit Fitness, <laughs> um, but they work really well uh, to be able to not change your handles and your straps all the time on the reformer. You just have both the handle loop and the handle itself, which is kind of nice. Beautiful. 
And the last one is heels together, toes apart, and we're just gonna press that out and pull it in. So here, if you're able to push quite far with those legs to all the way to straight on this, you might need to hold your hands very gently pushing away on the shoulder pads so that you don't catapult in towards the shoulder pads. So it's, it's gentle, don't over grip it. Go two more, I am in a lateral rotation here. Add something tiny to this. Push it out in lateral rotation, get it basically to straight, and then touch it down slightly. So you do have a flirt of a bent knee, so we're not jamming into the back of our knee joint. And just find that nice opener. Let's go three more. Exhale, press, well, I'm wiggling my heels. Glue your heels together, Ugh. And now what I'm gonna do is kind of look through, because I'm wiggling, so I wanna see if I'm in the center. Had I brought up my foot bar, I'd have a better gauge of that. I didn't, me bad and then bring it all the way home. Go ahead and take those feet out of the straps, grab behind those knees, and let's roll it up. So we wanna get a little hammy stretch here, come all the way out, and we're just gonna do sort of a, a mock on what would be considered a single thigh stretch, or Eve's lunge, whichever way you wanna view it. Very similar, similar movements. I'm gonna bring my one foot quite, I'll do this side first so you can see. One foot quite forward on the floor and I'm just gonna slip this leg back to get into my hip flexor here. So this hip flexor is not the one that's miffy. On the other side, I'll do this quite modified. So I'm gonna drop into this, lift my heart. If I feel I can get a little more hip flexor, I can put my hands on. Don't lift higher, keep the hip down, extend through the back, open that up. If you're still able to, this arm is going to reach. I'm going to grab on the inside of my ankle bone, drop down, and then I'm going to take the shoulder. Right now I'm looking away from you. I'm going to take that shoulder and I'm going to rotate myself to the front, getting my hip flexor opened here. One more big breath. Slowly let go of that. Place your hands down onto your carriage bed. Pike your hips back. So here will just depend on how flexible you are as to where you extend that leg. So I'm drawing up the ball of foot, sticking my booty out and dropping down, finding my hamstring. If you're okay with this, you can slide your leg farther back and get a little deeper. You can play around with that. I'm trying not to be rounded in the spine. I'm trying to be very open. So I actually take the attachment of the hamstring, the sit bone, and I push it away. Slowly cycle forward, get your hands underneath you, get your foot underneath you, and power that up. So on this side, I will modify this a fair amount. Um, my foot is quite far forward. I'm coming down to my hands. I'm gonna press that leg back. So this is as far as I'm gonna go. In fact, I'm not even going into this one. I've got a few funky things going on, and I know overstretching is not my friend right now. So I'm gonna, not that I wanna overstretch, but even stretching at all is not my friend. So I'm gonna go here. If that's fine, you're gonna lift the chest, and don't pull the hip out. Lift the chest and come a little higher. Still working for you, you're gonna rotate, take this hand, grab the inside of that foot, and then take this shoulder, and rotate it back. But the idea here is to drop into the hip, so this knee will bend deeper, and this hip will come in and then open that up. If I flex my foot, it'll increase it even more. Notice how my shoulders want to turn to you. I really want to work at taking this rib hip shoulder and pull it forward. Again, I'm just going to pull out of that hip a bit, but by all means, go nice and deep. Take a couple good breaths there. Slowly let that go, and let's go ahead into the hamstring. So I flex up my bottom foot, I untuck my tailbone. So if this is a big hamstring stretch, this is actually where I stay. If I can fold down without taking my tailbone under, because as soon as I take it under, I've moved my anchor point of my hamstring anyways, don't want to do that. If I can bring my foot farther forward and sit a little deeper into it, I will. Couple inhales, exhales for me, you guys. Relax your shoulders slowly bring that foot forward bring your hands forward carefully bring yourself out give yourself a nice little wiggle and let's just take a breath to finish inhale to come all the way up exhale hands down center heart little no and then let's go the other way open it up bring it all the way around roll those shoulders and we are done i will be doing a an anatomy abp and we are changing the name of that but i'm going to call it abp right now because i can't remember what we're changing it to me bad um course coming up in february uh middle of february i think the 18th or 19th is when we start it is on our website and then we will be doing a cadillac training starting in 
I think first weekend in March and then I will be doing a mat certification in May and then hopefully a reformer one in September. So a couple different certifications and trainings coming. So if you're interested in doing crossovers, bridges, challenging things, starting from scratch, never done Pilates, wanna teach Pilates, love it. Let me know. Give me a DM in my messages or send me a direct email. All the information is at the end of this video for my email information. Otherwise, thank you for joining me for a little bit of tower flow. Take care and keep moving in those bodies. Bye guys. <laughs>